We are at Berlin, we are at Daimler Buses eMobility 2.0 and today we're going to take a look at all the products to Daimler Buses. We're also going to get um, some information about the technical side and also a look into the future. Behind me we have the brand new Mercedes-Benz e Intero. It is a fully battery electric uh, intercity bus with uh, a range of up to 500 kilometers in one charging. As you can see, Mung is not in front of the camera this time. He has another job to do, so follow me on this event, the Daimler Buses eMobility 2.0. Now I have the chance to open up the flaps on this uh, new e Inturo. And as you can see, the battery is just behind the front axle. That is one big battery pack. There is also one extra battery pack in the back part of the bus that you can choose if you want to have um, the maximum range or only focus on the battery pack you have in the front. The difference is like you have a range on uh, 500 kilometers if you have the complete two package or 250 kilometers if you only choose to have one. The positive thing when only choosing one is that you can have more luggage and more passenger capacity. You have space on this 13 meter up to 63 passenger and you have 2.5 cubic meter with the luggage capacity, approximately 250, 300 kilo with luggage. I'm really happy now that we could bring it out, the e Inturo, a vehicle that is, you know, demonstrating the next step we're taking in e-mobility and um, coming from the city now to the next segment uh, with a product that is really capable of, of you know, doing the job as expected uh, with uh, up to 500 kilometers uh, distance coverage. So we are really, really proud to have it now launched, not yet, but revealed. The launch will be in Brussels on the bus world. I can see that uh, the balance of the battery packs uh, on the bus makes it a little bit strange because they have in front they have the battery pack that is going from one side to the other side but in the back of the bus they have the battery pack only on the left side nothing on the right side so the, the balance sideways is a little bit strange these have been a diesel bus they converted to electric if i could choose i would start with construction of an electric driveline and then build the bus around that. It's much, much better than doing like this, but I think this is the easy way to transform a diesel bus to electric, and you can easily come on the market very fast with this one because yeah, it's all the parts is already in production, so it's only that you make the electric drive line instead of the diesel. You have the CCS Type 2 charging point on both sides, left and right side, just behind the front axle. Behind the rear axle, you have the second battery pack that uh, gives you the range up to 500 km. And this pack is uh, an extra battery pack. You can choose if you want to have it or not. Where you normally find the diesel engine, you don't find it anymore. You have the battery pack on the left side of the bus and you have the electric components. And you also have an uh, extra fan. The fan is run by uh, high voltage, not uh, hydraulic as in the diesel. So as you can see here, the battery packs is uh, just behind the front axle. And this is the place where you normally find the diesel tank. So you don't lose any luggage capacity on this Inturo. Uh, they only remove the tanks and place one battery pack that gives you around 250 kilometers range. And as you can see, the luggage capacity is like normal on an Inturo. You have one flap on this side and two flaps on the other side. So approximately 2.5 cubic meter with luggage capacity. That means 250 to 300 kilo with weight. Oh, but we are not allowed to drive it yet. It's still uh, just a prototype. So I'm really looking forward to show you this out on the road in a near future. Behind me, we have the Citaro number 70,000. And just think about it, it's a lot. And this is going to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And it's an e-Citaro that is only 12.1 meter long and have five battery pack that is on each 95 kilowatt hour. So, and it means that it's a little bit less than 500 kilowatt hour. It means that it can drive approximately 400 kilometers on one charging. As you also can see, 
They have digital mirrors on this one and a little bit special blind spot camera. If you look at the corner, you can see the flat camera that is sticking out in the front and that is the blind spot camera. And I think it's better to have all digital mirrors when you choose that solution instead of a combination of analog and digital mirrors. Behind me we have the articulated version with the fuel cell and uh, as we heard today they have two types of software. So one software that you can uh, run the bus only on hydrogen where you have the battery as a range extender and the other one is that you run the bus on batteries and you have the fuel cell on a range extender. So it's uh, up to the customer what they want so they don't need to have both of the infrastructure on their bus depot. They can have only hydrogen uh, filling station or only electric charging system. To fulfill the maximum range of this one that is up to 700 kilometers, then you should have the possibility to charge and refill the hydrogen on the same place or at least in the same area. I'm now entering the articulated fuel cell bus that is running for SSB. As I can see, I like the style inside. It's a little bit dark, that's typical <laughs> Daimler. Uh, but the way they have uh, placed the seats and the way they have choose the color inside to compensate for the dark uh, gray colors, that's, that's quite good. And just take a look at this. You see all the other seats in the bus is uh, with the fabric. Here you have the leather seats still. I can see something in the back part that I don't like. Uh, that uh, I think that uh, Daimler and many other manufacturers should throw out and that is the big, big engine box. Here you can see it takes at least four seats. This is also a typical German style to have the seats placed so everyone can see each other. And it's a reason for that. Who is sitting in the back of the articulated bus? That's the young one. That's some people that like to make uh, some drawing or uh, do something uh, damaged on the bus. So here you are never completely alone. And another thing you can see here, they don't have a door in the back. I think the most interesting uh, piece in this uh, event is the e Intoro actually, that I think is, is a vehicle that will be very, very interesting for the Swedish and the Scandinavian market. And then I also think it's, it's kind of interesting that they have this uh, e Citaro FC, the fuel cell driven e Citaro. You can use it in three modes, pure battery, pure fuel cell, or a combination with the battery and, and the fuel cell range extender. We also heard today that they are uh, launching a new battery generation. So NMC4 generation is up, coming up very soon. It's always a big upgrade on batteries all over the world. You have the LFP battery, you have MNC batteries, you have the Blade batteries. So now you are come to the generation 4 that gives more energy per unit. On the bus behind me you have the NMC3 batteries and together with the hydrogen fuel cell you have a range up to 700 kilometers. With the new generation you will have maybe 10 to 15 percent longer range. And also I'm curious who is going to be the producer of the cells and the battery packs in the future because I know they're always looking out for uh, new suppliers, they're always looking out for uh, better cells and better battery solutions. So this is the industry all the time, it's, it's running so fast for the moment. It looks like in Europe that we are in a really bad situation when it comes to uh, battery production. You, uh, you still have to look to, uh, to China and Asia for, uh, for the best battery cells and also the price level is a challenge. Let's see how the industry will looks like in uh, like uh, five to ten years on the battery side, on the price level etc. Because also when you are asking uh, manufacturers, they say that um, the price level on an electric vehicle will go down really fast. Today you have to pay two times for electric bus compared to the diesel bus. Maybe in a few years you will see that the price level is similar. Most of it depends on the price for the battery cells. I think that in city and interurban applications we have already progressed quite a way. Uh, and it just shows that electromobility, battery driven vehicles can be operated in a city without a doubt. You know how fast now the E battery vehicles have been picking up in the city side and are going to pick up also on the interurban side. Because it's possible to charge them in a depot and they have distance enough to cover. Now, when it comes to coaches, they have a different job to do. 
The job is to travel longer distances on the one side, or the other job is to reach destinations um, that are, let's say, leisure parks or castles, things that are not directly situated at the um, highway. So for that, we need a broad, let's say, density of charging possibilities to allow uh, our customers, the operators, so to say, to really also move into E, because the products will not be the problem. They will be there by 2030, and the infrastructure is decisive to really move on. From today's point of view, we see around about 35,000 um, charging points, let's say 400, 450 um, kilowatt um, charging points that you would need. We have today 600, 700, so we would need around about a monthly development of 450, and that requires a little bit of speed. Um, so I think it's something that we have together now discuss. Um, not the question if we go that way, just how and in which steps. And together with the um, decision takers uh, on the regulatory side, as well as customers and us as OEMs, um, I think that, that should be the way forward. Because you can see in the city and now in Interurban is working. So if you're not subscribed on our channel, please click down on the button and you will get all the content from Bus Magazine from now and into the future.